I have reached out to every you know, uh, major law enforcement officer in the district I represent, um, and certainly every sheriff and most of the police chiefs. And you hear a pretty consistent theme. Uh, one is that we need to do a better job of enforcing the laws that are on the books right now. Now here's the problem. And right now at the federal level, there is one primary agency that's tasked with enforce, enforcing current law. Unfortunately, they've been without a director that's been approved by Congress for six years. They have fewer enforcement agents now than they had in 40 years. And so, you know, regardless of where folks are on this issue, you hear a consistent theme of we should do a better job enforcing current laws, and Congress has kind of dropped the ball on that. You know, I, I, I am a supporter of the Second Amendment. I grew up in, a, in a, a family that feels very strongly about that and believe in the rights of whether it be a hunter or a collector or someone who just wants to protect their home. At the same time, I mean, I think many of us saw these tragedies that happen, not just the ones that are high profile, but tragedies that happen around our country every day when folks break the law and have outrage about that. I believe we should protect the rights of responsible gun owners. At the same time, I also believe that it does not make sense for someone who's a felon or someone who's dangerously mentally ill to be able to acquire a weapon. And so from my standpoint, it does make sense to provide <coughs> some requirement for a background check so someone who's dangerously mentally ill or who's a felon to not be able to acquire, acquire a weapon. And, as, and I do not believe that that, uh, that that violates my right as a responsible gun owner or the rights of other responsible gun owners. And I say that in part because my reaction to the tragedies you've seen around the country was much less as a policymaker and much more as a dad of two little girls. You know, when I drop my kids off at school, I don't want them fearful for their safety. You know, you want your kids filled with hope and excitement about the day ahead, not concerned about whether they're going to be safe. And so I think that has to be part of the conversation. I think. Frankly, mental health needs to be part of the conversation. And, and listen, I have had so many conversations in my very brief tenure in office where you get a very strong sense that the federal government's moving in the wrong direction when it comes to providing adequate services for mental health. So, you know, what if any of these things is going to move forward in the Congress? I don't know, but I'm just giving you my sense of, 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 of the lay of the land.